What's up folks, welcome back to the garage. If you have watched my last video, you know what's going on, but just in case, this is my Volvo 940 uh, model 92 uh, B230 FT engine, and I have a problem with the cooling fan, it doesn't go on. Uh, the previous owner he is also following my videos and he has helped me a lot. Um, there was one problem with the connections, but it's solved and that, that doesn't solve my problem. Um, I have checked that the fan is working and uh, the relay is working and maybe the ECU is even working. Uh, but in the middle of video you will see a link there uh, you can watch my my last video or check from the from the channel Hans Garage but in this video I will remove the old ECU temp sensor I just got a new one from Autodoc and I will boil some water and we will put those uh, sensors in the same cattle and I will measure the resistance with my multimeter and uh, we will check if they match because I have, a, I have a thought that I might have a sensor failure. I think it doesn't, it shows a little bit too high uh, resistance ohms and that's why the ECU doesn't give the signal to the relay to turn the fan on. I'm thinking this might be the problem, but soon we will see if there is any difference between new and old sensor. But first I will show you where that ECU sensor is located, then I show how I remove it, and uh, then we can start doing some laboratory tests. It was a little bit difficult to film. Uh, I actually removed the sensor already and uh, I have I actually I bought last time when I removed the other sensor I bought this 19 millimeter socket long version this is 19 where it is there 19 or way of measuring but it's 19 millimeter long socket and this fits perfectly on this so I, it was actually quite easy to remove. There is two sensors, or actually three. That's a green wire, and there's a sensor, it's a knocking sensor. And uh, straight up from that, you can see the brass. There is a temp sensor, which gives the signal or a resistance to the temp gauge. And uh, you might even see, yes, down there there's a you can see red liquid it's a coolant so there's a place for the uh, temp sensor of ECU it's located uh, about in the same level that the third piston and uh, straight under the intake manifold it's a little bit difficult to locate but there, there it is and uh, last time I used my multimeter when the the sensor was on and uh, we measured uh, with the cold engine about 20 celsius about 5350 ohms and we should get about 2080 to 2700 about so it was a way off um, and uh, when the engine was hot about it was about uh, 83 celsius the engine uh, I got 456 ohms and normally it should be 290 to 364 so I think that might be the reason but soon we will be a little bit wiser because I like I told you I got my new sensor it's the old one I got the new sensor from uh, Outrock they sent me a huge box there was some paper on this was in the corner so <laughs> A little bit funny, uh, as you can see, it's a bright, and it's a Bosch 
made in Germany. It should be good quality, I hope. So, I have my water boiler, which uh, perfectly fits here in, in the garage, and uh, I just borrowed this from my kitchen. <laughs> I'm the main cook, so the cook doesn't mind. And uh, next I will, first I will put uh, about 20 Celsius uh, the water and we will measure the resistance then about 50 Celsius and then hot boiling water and then we will measure the resistance. It will be very interesting to see is there any difference between those, those sensors. It was a little bit difficult to take it on video so I already did the measurements. I have a old and new sensor and I used my multimeter. First I put, uh, sorry, <laughs> I had this as a bracket and uh, the first sensor was there and the second was here so the water was the same same temperature for whole sensors and I first I measured uh, the water 16.1, 16, 16 58 and 80 and uh, the result is that uh, there's no difference between old and new. So my old was working like it should. Uh, 16 degrees, about uh, 5,600, 5,600. Uh, 1,280, zero is missing. And uh, 100... Uh, 220 and uh, 1,270, 1,220, so almost the same. And then 80 degrees, almost same, 680, 670 about. And then the last one, I boiled the water and I dip the, <laughs> the sensor in there. So it was a hot boiling water. So old one, uh, 400. 30 and new one 420 so I was way off these these uh, numbers because by the chart at 80 it should be 290 to 364 so so and the water was a little bit hotter than than 80 so I couldn't get even under 400 but I got. Uh, I have also Finnish channel, and I got a tip from a, from a subscriber that couldn't you use a potentiometer? And a few days later, first I got wrong size of potentiometer. They sold me. This was actually a mu music uh, shop, and they sold me 500k. So it's a 500,000 ohms, and there's only one round this linear potential meter so you can imagine that if I'm trying to adjust it from 500,000 to zero it's a little bit different different uh, difficult to get uh, under 200 ohms with that and I should have noticed that by myself but I did actually a Finnish video in my Finnish channel Hans in Tally and I show that I measure the resistance and I, I used a 2M or 200K and uh, my viewers immediately commented that you have a wrong size of potential meter. <laughs> what an idiot I am. But then I went uh, meet a professional and he sold me this. This is 10K potential meter, so 10,000 and uh, it's uh, 10 turns so i can turn this around 10 times so it's uh, it's it should be quite easy to find the right right resistance with this potential meter as you can see from the chart 10000 10k is about a little bit under uh, 0 celsius so it's, it should be easier to drop it down here under 200 ohms. I will show you a little bit later, but first I will build a, some kind of bracket for this. So it's much easier to connect 
to the sensors. I build a case for potentiometer. As you can see, this is old spray can hat. And there's two wires coming out. And I connected my multimeter and there's connector ready. And uh, this is 10K uh, potentiometer. So I have in 20K, so it shows 9.97. And now when I'm turning to the left, you can see the resistance is going down. And by the chart, uh, 20 Celsius is about two or three thousand ohms, so I will take it down there about a little bit more about that. So next I will uh, connect the wires and I will check the uh, temp gauge first. It's the, the first sensor there and I have already connected the wires there and uh, we will check if the gauge is working uh, and uh, I can <laughs> check the, the ohms that does this idea work. Yes, now I have everything connected and I have about 1000 ohms I have in 2k position I don't know why, but now there's a minus in, in front of the ohms. I don't know why. Please give me some comments. <laughs> when I turn the ignition on, the minus showed. Uh, but now we have about two, uh, 1000 ohms, so it's about uh, 40 something Celsius. So then the gate should be a little bit up. Not much, but a little bit. Oh yes, that seems to be logic and uh, my idea might or actually <laughs> this this is not my idea but this actually might work and then we will go a little under 400 about 390 or something like that then we should be in normal running temperature whoops three hundred ninety about yes so we are somewhere there so it should be in half about the gauge Oh yes, just like it should. And uh, then we will put it like 200. 200 is little under 100 Celsius. I have to be careful. Small movements. We are almost there. Yeah, that's a little bit more. Yeah, we are close enough. 199. So we should be about there. I think we might be in red line <laughs> already. <laughs> oh yes, we are in the red. <laughs> and the engine is boiling already. So, after this test, I think this might, might work. Next, I will connect the temp cage sensor and uh, I will change the wires into the ECU wire connector, which is already there. And then we will make a new test. Well, I'm getting fed up. I have a... Uh, 1000 almost 600 ohms here so it should be should be about 30 30 degrees about and the cooling fan is is on full speed and uh, even if i 
change the or open the connectors it uh, acts same so I'm a little bit confused but I hope that I can get some good comments from you what could be could be the wrong do I have a totally wrong connection here <laughs> or or what's what's going on what what could cause this these issues but I have to get back on the drawing board yeah I wait your comments and uh, comments in my Finnish channel if if I could get some advice how to fix this problem but I have a plan B the previous owner has installed the extra uh, temp sensor there near a uh, radiator and if I couldn't if I can't get this original system work I will connect that and I will connect the relay in the half speed and then maybe uh, do a new wire to the cabin and I will put the switch to ground the full speed so then I would have a automatic half speed and uh, for raising <laughs> or full throttle uh, mode then I can push the fan for, for full from the switch that my plan B I would like to use the original system but what I have to also do uh, I think my uh, the pressure can or I don't know the real the here where where I pour the uh, cooling liquid I think the one uh, hose is a little bit leaking and it can't hold the pressure and this engine is known as a, a steam pot so it needs quite quite high temperature the engine to turn the fan on so if there is not enough pressure if I have been awake in physics lessons I know that uh, there should be enough pressure to raise the temperature high enough so the sensors would give the signal to the uh, ECU and the ECU should turn the fan on so that might be also reason uh, I know that uh, the thermostat is working like it should but I have to fix that one hose or actually change it and uh, make sure that the cap holds enough pressure and it's the uh, right kind of cap for turbo volvos. That's my, that's my plan. But I won't be doing any fan videos before I can fix the problem in, in background. Next I will do some 145 videos. I have new parts and I have to do the MOT. So. Now it's uh, 1.45's turn. But hey, thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up, comments down below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, now it's a perfect time to do that. And also ring the bell. Thanks for watching. See you soon.